Hey, welcome to the channel. My name is Otto and I hope you're having a fantastic day. This is a video tutorial on how to use the Sony a7 IV. It is for beginners, so I'm going to start from the ground and then explain what most of the buttons do and a few items on the menus that you need to know if you are new to this kind of cameras. After you take everything out from the box, the first thing to do is to insert the battery on the camera. At the bottom of the camera, slide the switch on the camera cover. With the battery, push this blue lever to the side and then push the battery all the way in until the blue lever locks the battery in position. Close the cover and slide the switch to the lock position. Use the power adapter with a supplied USB-C cable. On the left side of the camera, open this cover and connect the cable on the USB-C port like this. The orange light means that the battery is charging and when it's off, it means that the charging is done. The other way to charge your battery is with an external charger like this one, especially if you have more than one battery. To insert a memory card, go to the right side of the camera. Slide the switch to unlock the cover and slide the cover like this. There are two slots available. The upper one is slot number one and the lower one is slot number two. If you are using an SD card, insert the card with the contacts facing the back of the camera and push it all the way in until it clicks. You can use a second memory card to create a backup of your pictures and videos or to save pictures on one card and videos on the other one. To remove the SD card, Open the memory card cover, then push the card and just pull it away. To attach a lens to the camera, remove the sensor cap by twisting it counterclockwise. Remove the rear cap on the lens. And now line up the dot on the lens with this dot on the camera. And turn the lens clockwise until it clicks into the lock position. To remove the lens, there is a lens release button down here Press and hold it and turn the lens counterclockwise. To turn the camera on, move this switch to the on position. And now select the camera mode that you want to use with this dial down here. You can select photo mode, video mode, or SMQ, which stands for slow and quick, and this can be used for slow motion or time lapses. To turn the dial, you need to press this button to unlock it and then just move it in either direction. If you are new to these kind of cameras and you want to use it right away, you can set this dial to this green icon, which is the automatic mode on the camera. To take a picture, you need to press the shutter button, which is right on top of the on and off switch. And to start recording a video, you need to press the record button over here. When you take a picture, it's always recommended to press the shutter halfway down for the camera to grab the focus. You check it on the screen, the green box is what's on focus, and then finish pressing the shutter. This is a two-step movement where you're doing a step number one and then a step number two. The wrong way to do this is to press halfway and then release and then press the shutter all the way down. So now that you know the basics, let's take a look at the rest of the camera. The camera has three dials at the top. This one on the front is to change the aperture. This one is to change the shutter speed. And this dial over here can be customized and I feel that using it for the ISO is a good idea. It has a lock at the top and to unlock it, just press this button at the top. There are four custom dedicated buttons on the Sony a7 IV, C1, C2 over here, C3, and this one down here is C4. But you can customize most of the buttons on this camera. Here on the left side, you can use the USB-C port to charge the battery, but also to connect the camera to your computer to transfer your pictures and videos or to use the camera as a webcam. On this port down here, I believe it's called the multi-port, you can attach different accessories like this remote control that I have over here. Up here, we have a microphone jack and down here, an audio monitor headphone jack. 
If you want to mount a microphone on the camera, you need to remove this cover by pulling it backwards. And now you can place the microphone uh, just like this, connect it and tighten the microphone to the hot shoe. If you're not using the hot shoe, don't forget to insert the cover back again. If you open this cover, there is a full-size HDMI port to connect the camera to an external monitor. On the back of the camera, we have a joystick up here, and you can use it to move the focus point when you want the camera to focus on a specific area. Down here, this is the function button. And this is like a quick menu that can be fully customized and you can have one menu for pictures and a different one for videos. This over here is another dial. You can also customize it and these are also buttons. If you press up, you will have different information on the display or the viewfinder. To the right, you can select the ISO. By the way, if you select Auto ISO, you can select the minimum and the maximum ISO. The dot in the middle of the wheel is to confirm the change that you did, and if you want to cancel, you can press the menu button. On this camera, you can also press OK or cancel on the screen. Pressing the left button on the wheel will give you different options for picture mode, like continuous shooting, a self-timer, and different bracketing options. This one down here is the playback button and here you can view your pictures and videos. You can delete them with this button and this button over here will zoom in on the picture. To zoom out, you can use this button or you can use the wheel to zoom in and to zoom out. And the buttons can help you move across the frame but you can also use the joystick up here. The display on this camera can be flipped all the way out, which is ideal for vlogging or selfie mode. And you can also tilt the screen up and down. Up here, we have the menu button to go into the menus. You can navigate the menu using your finger on the screen, or you can use the joystick or the dial down here to do so. I am not going through the whole menu, but I want to explain where you can find some of the basic items. On the red tab, on image quality, you can select between JPEG or HAVE. Just below that, on image quality settings, you can select to shoot RAW, JPEG, or RAW and JPEG at the same time. If you're going to shoot RAW, you can select compressed, lossless compressed, and uncompressed. And down here, you can select the JPEG or the HAVE quality and size. I'm still at the red tab, and if we go down to number 5, the USB streaming tab, you can select the resolution and the frame rate of the camera when you use it as a webcam. Okay, so now let's go to the purple tab, and on the AFMF focus tab, and then focus mode, you can select how you want the camera to focus. Single shot is good for taking pictures, continuous autofocus is great for videos, and you can also select manual focus as well. On tab number two, you can select the focus area, and this is the area where the camera will search for a focus point. If you're using auto mode, the focus area is going to be set to wide. If you're not using auto mode, you can select other focus areas. Center fix will make the camera try to focus on whatever is in the center of the frame. You can also select a spot, select a size, for example, medium, and the camera will focus on that spot which you can move around with the joystick. The yellow tab is the setup menu. And on number three, operation customize, we can customize the buttons and the dials for photo mode and video mode. So on the left column, you select the different camera positions. For example, the back, the top, and the dials. So if I want to assign something for this button up here, I just select it on the menu. So it's uh, this one. And then I can select what I want the camera to do when I press that button. 
All right, so I'm still on tab number three of the setup menu. And if I go down over here, we can customize the menu for the function button. Up here, we have the menu for the picture mode. And down here, we have the menu for video mode. Just select the position and then select from the menu whatever you need to use. You can do so much more with this camera, but hopefully this was a good introduction on how to use it. I hope you enjoy shooting videos or pictures with this new camera. Have a great week and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.